Hello. Sorry? Can I cut it? Did I cut it? No. It hasn't been cut since COVID started. I was growing up my hair since like the November before it started. Yeah. She braided it in Toronto and I just cut it like short like recently. Yeah.
Okay, let's get started. So the topic of today's lecture is streams, redirection and piping. Uh, so a data stream on a uh, Unix-like operating system, it's just bytes, right? It's an ordered sequence of bytes, right? It's just information, right? Bits and bytes. Um, and so Linux tends to treat everything as just text, right? Your streams are, are streams of text, right? Uh, programs can read a stream, so they can read a data stream, right? And programs can write to a data stream. So that's not surprising, right? So remember in Java, when you used to write system.out.println, right? Out was hooked up to standard output, right? Uh, if you read from the keyboard, you would hook it up to standard, you would hook up uh, something, either the scanner or some other object to standard input, right? So system uh, in. And then um, you probably never did it, but there's also a system.err, which is uh, the error stream. Right? And so the, in Java, those correspond to the, um, what are called the uh, standard input, standard output, and standard error in, Lin in, uh, in Unix or Linux. So standard input is the stream from which you read data. Right? So by default on a Unix-like system, uh, standard input is connected to the keyboard. Right? So your operating system provides the illusion that the keyboard is just a stream of data. Right? And it calls that uh, stream of data the standard input. Standard output uh, is, um, is where normal output from a program appears. Right? Normal text-based output appears. Right? Or can be written to. So on a Unix-like system, by default, standard output is connected to a terminal somewhere. Right? So in other words, uh, standard output is connected to one of these guys. Right? Standard error is where um, either error or diagnostic messages are, uh, are output to. And by default on uh, Unix-like system, standard error is also connected to the same terminal that uh, standard output is connected to. Right, so those are your three standard streams. Not surprisingly, the streams have unique identifiers. Um, Linux was very, or Unix was very creative and called them zero, one, and two, right? So those are called the file descriptors that correspond to standard input, standard output, and standard error. Right? If you, um, you can actually look these up in, uh, in the C system libraries. You'll find a header file that says standard, error, standard input is zero, standard output is one, um, and standard error is two. Right? So those are, um, that's how you can uh, get to uh, standard input, standard output, and standard error, and I'll show you exactly the syntax you use in a second. Okay, so commands in Linux, you can think of them as segments of a pipe, right? Something comes in, something comes out, right? Input flows in one end, output flows out the other end. Uh, the mantra in Linux or Unix is that garbage in equals garbage out, right? So uh, Unix assumes that uh, whoever is using the system is competent, right? And will feed it sane inputs, right? If you feed it um, bad inputs, uh, you should not be surprised to get something bad on the output, right? But that's the way Linux uh, commands work, right? Something comes in, something comes out. And input can take the form of a command line argument, right? So you know uh, many of the commands that I've been using or showing you in class, right? You'll type something like ls, and then there'll be an argument after it, like slash bin, right? So the bin, slash bin, uh, that's input to the command that takes the form of a command line argument, right? And you know that if you type ls slash bin, right, uh, at least in my version of Linux, you get a bunch of stuff, right? A bunch of stuff suddenly appears on standard output, right? Um, on Mac, I'm pretty sure it's a lot less than this because um, Mac organizes its files differently. So that's fine, right? You still get some output. The output appears on standard output. Uh, but input can come from other sources as well, right? Uh, so some Linux commands will actually read standard input uh, for um, its input, right? So for example, oh, hang on. Oh. I'm just monitoring the live stream. Okay, so for example, there's this command called sort, right? Sort, um, you can use it in many different ways, uh, but one of the ways you can use it is that you can type sort then you can press enter to run the command, and then you can start typing stuff on your keyboard, right? What sort does is it sorts a file line by line, right? Uh, so it will, it'll read a file, 
uh, one line at a time, and then it will output the contents of the file uh, one line at a time, where the contents are in sorted order. Right? Uh, but you don't have to read a file. You can also read standard input. Right? So I can type in sort zebra, elephant, anteater, dog, um, and I'll show you that in a second, uh, and have it output the sorted order of those words. Right? Now the weird thing is, when you run sort, um, it won't be clear how you tell sort that you're done entering text. Right? And the way you tell sort that you're done entering text is to type control D. Right? So don't forget that if you're ever trying to run a command um, that reads standard input. Right? And I'll show you what happens when you run sort. Right, so if I just type sort and you press enter, and then suddenly sort just sits here and does nothing, right? which is very confusing for a novice Linux user. Right? You're saying, well, now what? Right, so let's try, whoops, sorry. Let's try typing some stuff in. So zebra, right? Okay, so, mm, all right, I type zebra, nothing seems to happen. Elephant, right, press enter. Again, nothing seems to happen. Dog, right, enter, nothing seems to happen. Uh, what was the other, anteater, right? Anteater, enter. Right, and you're saying, well, sort's not doing anything. I'm just typing in some text and nothing's happening. Um, and you know, if you're the average person, you start hammering the enter key, so you, right? Nothing happens, right? What you have to remember is that you have to press control D. That ends the input, right? And now you can see that it outputs the um, text in sorted order, right? One line at a time. So it's, it doesn't sort the contents of a line. It outputs whatever the contents of the file are line by line in sorted order, right? So there's an example of a Linux program uh, that takes in um, uh, that can read standard input um, for its inputs. Right? Uh, I just heard a funny beep. Hang on. Standard input. No, still me. Control. Okay. Um, CalSay, our fun CalSay program. Oh, by the way, I, I, remember, I, I figured out how to get CalSay to tell you what pictures it can draw. It can, pick, it can draw all of those. Um, so anyway, CalSay is another example of a program that will read standard input uh, for its input. Right, so for example, cow say. So I'm just gonna use the regular cow for now. Right, so you know that I've been showing you to use it like this, right, so cow say hello, right? Cow say spits out something on standard output, right? There's a cow that says hello. Cow say, who wants to pick the next? Yeah. Vader. Vader, Vader, good. Right, okay, so now I'm gonna use cow say to read standard input, right? So I enter in the command, I press enter, Nothing happens, right? Nothing happens because CalSay is waiting for me to type something in the keyboard and then tell it I'm done typing. Right, what would Vader say? Ah, Luke, I am your father. Actually, what does he say? Is that right? I am? He says, no, I am your father. It's no? It's no, I am your father. I am. No, excuse me. Mandela effect on his desk. Right, okay. Press enter, nothing happens, right? Keep on hammering on enter, nothing will happen. Control D, there's Vader. Right? So it's, uh, it's a cow, but it's got Darth Vader's head. And it's Cow Vader, right? It says Cow Vader at the bottom. Right, Cow Vader. Yeah, you, I mean, yeah. You, can, uh, you can define your own files if you want. So you can define your own files of, um, of shapes. Okay, so there's another example of a program that will read standard input. Uh, where are we? So remember, if, you're, if you are doing this, standard input ends when you type control D, right? It's very confusing if you're using this for the first time and, you're not, and you don't realize that that's the way to end input. Okay, now, output from most Linux commands goes to standard output, right? In other words, it appears on your screen. So like I showed you, when you run sort, whether you uh, read standard input or whether you read the contents of a file, right, the output of sort goes to the standard output. Right, so it prints something to the screen. Uh, which if you think about it for a second, it's, not, uh, it's great if you're using the commands interactively. Right? But if you want to program something, that's not so great because all your output's going to go to the screen, whereas you might want to send it somewhere else. Um, and I'm going to show you how to send it somewhere else shortly. Right? Now what's this standard error business? So anything that outputs an error message probably outputs it to standard error. Now the problem is standard error and standard output by default go to the same place. So it just shows up on your screen, so you can't really tell the difference. Uh, but if you do something like 
um, ls root bin, right? So I don't have a file called in my bin folder, right? So ls is going to output an error message, right? It's going to say cannot access bin no such file or directory, right? That actually goes to standard error, right? It's actually going to standard error, and I'll prove that in a minute. Okay, so you can change where output goes, right? You can change, oh, uh, so the user can change where a command gets its input from or sends its output to via redirection, right? Redirecting standard output or standard error allows the user to send the output of a command to a file, right? So you, instead of sending stuff to the screen, you can save it in a file. Redirecting standard input allows the user to send the contents of a file as input to a command. Right? So sort is one of those uh, commands that will read a file. Right? So we read the contents of a file, and it will output the sorted contents of the file back onto standard output. OK, so how do you do this? So to redirect standard output, you place uh, 1 greater than, and then the name of the file that you want to send the output to. Right? After the command. Right? After the command and its arguments. Right? So the one is the file descriptor. Right? File descriptor number one is standard output. Right? This says send standard output to whatever file that is. Right? Uh, for the current command. Right? Subsequent commands will just send things back to standard output. Um, this will create a file if, if the file does not exist. If your file exists, it uh, overwrites the contents. Right? So you have to be a little bit careful about that. Um, it will blow over um, an existing file. Right? For example, um, I want to, so I'm going to go into my home directory, and I'm going to list all the contents uh, of my home directory. Okay? So ls minus a. Right? So go into my home directory. Good. ls minus big A. Right? You can see I've got some files in my home directory. I just made these up for this lecture. Right? Uh, instead of printing stuff to the screen, right, I can redirect that. Uh, sorry, one. One greater than uh, files.txt. So I can redirect the output to a file called files.txt. And now nothing appears on standard output. Right? Because I've redirected standard output to go to the file files.txt. OK, so if you're on Windows, um, you can actually open up the Windows uh, system uh, file manager from a command shell. Uh, if you're on Mac, you just use the regular Mac uh, file manager, right? But in Windows, you can type Explorer and then dot. That will open up uh, Windows File Explorer in my home directory. There you go. Right? That's super handy, actually, if, you're, if you really want to use the uh, Windows File Explorer. Uh, because your uh, Linux uh, stuff is in a strange spot, right? It's not in a, it's not in a usual file location in Windows. OK, so you can see that there is, in fact, this file called files.txt, right? If I double click on that, Notepad will open, and lo and behold, that's the output of ls minus a in my home directory, right? It sent all the, uh, it sent all the output to the file called files.txt, right? So that's neat. Now, redirecting standard output is so common that you don't have to put the file descriptor, <coughs> right? So you don't have to put one greater than. You can just use greater than, and that will uh, automatically redirect uh, standard output to, in this case, files.txt. Right? Uh, wrong one, this one. Right? So instead of using the one greater than, I'm just going to do that, right? And you do that, and here, you can see that, oops, sorry. So uh, the time has changed, right? It actually has written a new file, and the contents of the file are there. Great, right? So you can just use greater than to do redirection to standard output, of standard output, sorry. Now, any command that sends its output to standard output can have its, uh, can have its output redirected to a file. Right? So for example, calse, I can redirect its output to a file. 
Right, so cal say minus f dragon. Right, so cal say minus f dragon mm, crunchy night. Right, so if I do that to the screen, I get that. Right, if I redirect the contents to, uh, let's just do cal say. Right, nothing appears, but in my home directory, uh, there should be, oops, where to go? Should be here. Do I have to refresh this? Uh, how do I refresh this? Let's do this. And there it is. Right, and there's your dragon, right? There's the output saved to a file. So that's cool, right? Now, if you uh, don't want to overwrite your file, right, if instead you want to append to the file, uh, you use greater than, greater than, right? So that will append uh, to, that will append the contents of L uh, the output of ls minus a to the file, files.txt, right? So let's try that again. Uh, let me get rid of this, and not that one. Right, so, so I'm just going to do this uh, cat files. So this is going to print the contents of files.txt to the screen. Right, you can see that it's just the listing of the contents. Right, so now I'm going to do ls minus uh, big A, uh, and I'm going to append uh, that output to files.txt. Right, and now when I open up files.txt, right, you'll see that everything appears twice. Right, because I've appended the con I've appended the output to the file twice. Oh, sorry, I've appended the output to the file um, after previously having um, written to the file. Right, so you can append as well. Now, if you want to redirect standard error, you must use two. Right, so uh, the shortcut with no file descriptor is standard output. Right, if you want to redirect standard output uh, standard error, you must use the two. So when I, uh, now I can prove to you that when I ran ls with a bad argument, it actually did go to standard error, right? So ls, right? ls root bin, uh, some file that doesn't exist, right? Seems to send stuff to standard out, but in fact, if I redirect standard input, uh, standard error to a file, Nothing appears, right? So nothing appears on standard output, right? Which means the ls command couldn't do anything, uh, was not able to output anything, um, any valid information, right? But that message did in fact go to error.txt, and you can confirm that, right? Just by opening up hmm. um, error.txt, sorry, right there. Right, so you can see that in fact uh, ls did send its out, uh, did send its diagnostic output to error to standard error instead of sending it to standard output. Uh, good. Okay, now you can redirect both streams if you want to, right? So it's not unusual for a program to output useful or valid information plus uh, output um, diagnostic or error information. Right, so you can redirect in this case, right? So ls root bin, that lists the contents of the bin directory, right? But you can, set, you can specify more than one directory or file to list the contents of, right? So if I tell it to also list uh, file root bin zzz, if it exists, right? That should appear on standard output, right? So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take the output of that. Well, why don't we look at the output of that quickly? That's worthwhile doing, right? So ls root bin spits out the contents of the bin directory, right? ls bin z, oh, bib, whatever, bin, doesn't matter, same thing, right? Says that there's no such file or directory. If I do both at the same time, uh, whoop, 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 bin, right? There's the contents of bin, and if you go up where I typed in the command, did I, Hopefully I can see it. 
uh oh, there it is, right? It prints out the error message as well, right? And now I can direct both streams uh, to separate files, right? So I'm going to direct that to files.txt, and I'm going to direct the error stream to error.txt, right? Nothing gets printed on standard output, right? Because standard output got directed to files.txt. Nothing got printed on standard error because that got directed to error.txt. And if you go and open up the files, you'll see that they contain the information that you expect. Right? So you can redirect both at once. There's even a way to redirect both of them to the same place. Um, but uh, so if you ever want to do that, uh, you can look that up. Right? It's not critical right now. But it is possible to direct them to the same place. OK, now you can also redirect standard input. Uh, but this is a little less common uh, than redirecting standard output. Actually, it's a lot less common. Okay, so to redirect standard input so that uh, your program reads, its, uh, reads the contents of a file, instead of reading the keyboard, you write zero uh, less than, right? So the direction that the, I guess the less than or greater than sign is pointing is suggesting whether or not it, you're redirecting input or output, right? This looks like you're taking uh, this file and sending it that way, right? When you write the greater than sign, it looks like you're taking the output and sending it to the file. You need the zero because that's standard input, right? So you have to, there's, there's, uh, no, sorry, you don't need the zero. There's a shortcut for this too, right? But zero is the file descriptor, right? So you can have a program um, pull in its input from a file. Now, the thing is with most Linux commands is they already pull in the contents from a file, right? So the way most Linux commands are written is they will either read standard input if there's nothing on standard, sorry. If you give it no arguments, it'll read standard input. If you give it an argument, it'll assume it's a file or a string and it'll read that, it'll use the, the contents of the file instead. So you often don't have to do this, right? But you can if you really want to, right? So here I'm going to take the contents of unsorted.txt and redirect that into the sort program. Uh, so well, I have to make a file called unsorted.txt because I don't think I have one. Okay, so vi uh, unsorted. This is uh, one of the command line um, text editors. The, I don't recommend you, well, if you try to use it, you'll have to look up how to use it. Um, it's not the most intuitive uh, piece of software in the world. Elephant, dog, uh, zebra. Oh, this is almost sorted. Uh, anteater. Right, so that's the input I want to send. Sorry, escape, W. So that's the input I want to send to sort. So how do I send it to sort? I do sort, uh, do, 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 do one, that, uh, unsorted. Zero, right, not one, one standard output. Okay, boop, and there you go, right? So it reads the contents of unsorted.txt, processes it one line at a time and uh, outputs the sorted uh, contents, right? Now sort, you don't actually have to redirect because it knows how to read a file anyway. So you can just write that most of the time, right? And most Linux commands are like this, right? Um, it's unusual for a Linux command to only read standard input. But that's how you do it if you want to do it or if you need to do it, right? And like standard output, uh, standard input, uh, you, don't need to, you don't need the file descriptor to redirect standard input, right? You can just use less than, and that works fine. Uh, and of course, right, I can redirect uh, as both streams if I want to, right? So I can redirect the input stream, right? And so in other words, I can feed sort unsorted.txt, and then I can tell it to send its output to sorted.txt, right? Instead of printing it to the screen. Right, so, right, read the contents of unsorted.txt for your input, output the contents to sorted.txt, sorted.txt, text as your output, right, cat sorted will output the contents of sorted to standard output, right, and there you go, right, so you can see that in fact sorted.txt really does contain the sorted list of animals. Okay, right, so Linux command, input, command, output, right? All the inputs are text, all the outputs are text, right? Um, so uh, 
all commands have inputs and outputs. Can you connect the output of a command to the input of a second command? The answer is yes, you can, right? So I can chain ls to this program called less, for example, right? So I can connect segments of pipe using the, horizontal, uh, the vertical bar, right? So the vertical bar takes the output of the previous command, sends it to the input of the next command, right? So ls slash bin, right? Whatever ls slash bin sends to standard output, I'm going to send that to this program called less, right? Less is just, um, is just a program that you can use to look at text, right? So let's try that. Right, so ls root bin uh, pipe to uh, less. Enter, right? So less is the program that the man pages use, right? So I can see that these are the first, I don't know, 25 or six files that are in the bin directory. There's the next 25, there's the next 25, there's the next 25, right? And so on and so on, right? So I can send the output from one program as the input of another program. And that's how you build more complicated uh, commands in Linux, right? So the Unix philosophy is, right, every command should do something, one thing and one thing well, right? If you want to build more complicated commands, you have to string commands together or pipe them together, right? Uh, I showed you this earlier, right? You know there's a program called Fortune that outputs a random fortune, right? I can pipe the output to Kause, and Kause will then say the fortune. Right? We don't need to see that again, I don't think, right? And you can connect as many commands as you want, right? So I can output, I can use ls to output or to list the contents of the bin directory and the user bin directory, right? So that's going to spit out a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, it's about 2,000 files on my computer, right? I can then sort all of that output, right? So alphabetically sort the output line by line, right? And then I can pass the sorted output to this program called less to look at it page by page. Right. So let's look at that. Right. So ls minus a, what was it, bin, and then user bin. So list the contents of those two directories. I'm going to cheat, so I'm going to jump ahead for a second. So I'm going to send the output to a program called word count. Um, word count is going to count the number of lines. Right, and I'm going to use one to make sure it's one column of output. So you can see there's almost 2,000 files in those two directories, right? Okay, so now I'm going to actually type in the command, right? I'm going to send it to sort, right? If I do that, you get a bunch of stuff, right? It just flies by because there's like 2,000 files in there, right? So I can then send that to less, right? So that I can look at the, uh, look at the, look at the output in a more, uh, I guess, sane way, but this isn't sane either because there's 2,000 files. All right, it'll take me forever to tab through all these. You can see that there's a bunch of duplicated files, right? So there are these uh, directories called NF and VG auth service and X11 and a bunch of uh, duplicates, right? So um, in this particular installation of Linux, uh, there's a bunch of uh, files that are duplicated in um, root bin and in root user bin. Right, boop, boop. Right, so there's lots, you can see there's lots of duplicates, right? Now, is there a way to get rid of duplicates? There is. Quit, thank you. Is our stream still up? I hope our stream is still up. Am I still there or did the audio cut out? Uh-oh. Oh, wait. Oh, no, there we go. Still there. OK. Uh, so I just showed you this a second ago, right? I can pipe the output to this program called WC, which is word count, right? WC minus L, count the number of lines, right? Uh, and that told me there was almost 2,000 files, right? How many unique files are there? So there's this program called Unique, right? If you give it a sorted, uh, if you give it some sorted output, it will tell you how many of those things are unique. Right, so let's see how many of those files are actually unique. Doot, 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 sort unique, uh, and then send that to word count. Well, actually, why don't we do unique first? So if I do that, and I look at the output, 
right? You can see that there are no duplicates now, right? And so if I want to know how many files are there, well, I just pipe that to word count, right? And it tells me there are 978 uh, unique files, right? Now, what if I want the number of duplicated files? Well, unique can do that too, minus D, right? Minus D will tell me will tell unique to give me the count of uh, to give me all the duplicated files instead, right? And it tells you there's 975, right? And if you count, right? If I bypass unique altogether, I get 1953, which is the sum of the other two numbers, right? And that's how you pipe in Linux. Boop, boop. Well, I'm done early today. Um, okay. Uh, anybody have any questions? Yes. Possible to do arithmetic operations in Linux? Yes, you can do them, but uh, you have to know how to do them in Bash. So you have to understand the scripting language and how it does arithmetic. Yeah, but it's possible. Yeah. How do you find the Ubuntu files in Windows? It's uh, not so easy. So you have to you have to figure out where you. Uh, where Ubuntu has been installed. So it's not the easiest thing to do in the world. But the, uh, the easiest thing to do is to, open up, uh, file, is to open up Explorer inside of a Ubuntu window. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. So dash L allows you to see just files instead of counting words, count files instead? Yeah, so. So word count will print a whole bunch of stuff, right? It'll print out, uh, it'll tell you how many words, how many characters there are, all sorts of other things. If you just want the number of lines, it's minus L, right? You just go through the options here, right? Good? Okay, we're done. Oh.